thank you so much for staying with uh, Citizen Weekend. Uh, once again, we delve into the conversation of Pay Models uh, KE. This week, that's been the hashtag that uh, made fodder for talk. Um, it was started uh, by Sheila Kanini, who is Miss World Kenya Machakos County 2016. And basically, a lot of models uh, came out to talk about the issues that they've been facing um, in this industry. I'll be introducing my guests in studio for a panel discussion very shortly, including Sheila, who started this hashtag. But before that, let's uh, get a sneak preview into what really happens in this world of modeling. Sobutu, I'm 20 years of age and an upcoming fashion model. I've been modeling for a year, so like this is my, this is my second year, yeah. My name is Dawson Amol. I'm a fashion model. I'm 22 years old of age, and uh, apart from fashion, I, I also do poetry, and uh, I've been in this industry for around five years. When I started back in uh, 2016, after doing stage plays with uh, Theatrix for three months, then I decided to join Versatile. I had this contract with them last year for an extra feature for a campaign. So I only got my pay like after four months and it was like really frustrating. We have bills, you have to keep it. The organizers expect you to like be smart, be there in time and also look good. So how am I gonna do that if I work like a, in January then get my pay in mid, mid of the year? I've actually worked in Uganda and I've worked in Tanzania and uh, what I can say is that I feel that fashion is more valued in those countries. Okay, they're part of East Africa. Uh, when I joined fashion five years ago, I believe that Kenya was much ahead of them. Uh, but right now, when you see the trend on what's happening on fashion and how the people are getting uh, you know, jobs and getting abroad because of focusing on the models and foc focusing on the art, actually, the African art, then uh, I'll testify to you that uh, most of them are doing better than us here. The agencies need to be serious. Most of the agencies, we, li we have like minim minim minimal agencies. You like a start counting then you end up like only nar narrowing down to like a two or three that will like uh, provide like the fashion. I've talked with some people, like those who like signed to the agency and they're saying that like, uh, they paid money to sign to the agency, then they spend years without even getting a single, a single job. I saw myself working in runways as from 10. So it has been like, it, it is a passion. So I do it because I love it. Yeah, otherwise then I would just like gone, gone back to school and Go ahead with my studies, yeah? But then, because I love it, I know I want to make a career out of it. So I have to keep on. Just like a, a single stamp of the ones like I put you down. So you have to push it yourself, know where you're going, and yeah, realize what you need. So that's what keeps me going, the passion for it. Many people are struggling on themselves to like get international jobs. If you love something, you want to do it, you have to earn from it, then you have to struggle it. On my side, I, I don't... I don't like doing jobs that will not pay me. It's rather I just stay like that and try working on myself. Maybe some, someone somewhere will spot you somewhere because I'm losing hope in the industry. Wow, um, and those are just some testimonials. As you know, commercial models uh, are male and female, and therefore those young men there talking about uh, some of their experiences in the industry, one of the gentlemen there talking about not wanting to work for free and yet this is what a lot of agencies and indeed corporate uh, music artists are subjecting commercial models to that, hey, I'll give you the exposure and therefore come in and do this for me for free. And that's why Sheila Kanini Miss Royal Kenya Machakos County 2016 started the hashtag pay models uh, KE. Um, I'll be introducing my panel in studio this evening, starting on this end with uh, Steve Ogola, who is a lawyer um, he'll be talking to us about the rights um, that are involved uh, contractual on contractual basis and what have you. We'll be talking about the legal ramifications as well. We're also joined by Sheila Kanini, who is uh, Miss World Kenya, Machakos County 2016. She's with us and she's the one who started this hashtag. Um, and also with us this evening, Olive White there. Um, on this end, that's Olive White there, Miss World Kenya, Moranga County. Um, that's Olive, and we're also joined by uh, Benjamin Rochar of uh, In Vogue Modeling Agency. Let's get on with it. Sheila, you started the Pay Models Kenya hashtag. Why? Well, I just got tired because of basically what was happening to us. Yeah? 
people were not being paid and I was going through it. I just got tired of asking for the money. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the reason why I yeah. started to. So I've seen, I've actually seen a very prominent billboard of yours, um, I think uh, on Langata Road or, or Gong Road is somewhere. And uh, so just take us through a little bit of what you've experienced. And when we talk about not being paid, are you talking about high profile jobs? Are you talking about runway? Are you talking about music videos? Where does this rot lie? Who are the culprits? The culprits are the middlemen who are the agencies. Because, for example, if a client who uh, gives who gives the, the agencies the job and is trying to find models, he pays, yeah, probably 50% and expects the models to be paid at least 50%. Mm -hmm. But those guys are like, we are going to use this money for our own good and then we'll pay the models when we feel like, because, of course, the models don't know their rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for you, this particular moment in time, what informed you you're saying you got tired uh, but why now why after going through all those experiences did you choose this specific time to start this conversation it started as an instagram rant i posted on my instagram stories about a certain magazine that i worked for five months ago that refused to pay me and when i mean refused i mean like refused yeah because they keep telling you stories and it's lies because if you speak to one person from like the magazine they tell you something different when you speak to someone else they tell you something different and it's just not me mm -hmm. people are telling me you're expecting them to pay you just forget about it but when you talk about them refusing to pay you does that conversation happen before you actually agreed to work for them or agreed to shoot with them the conversation over the pay okay when they contacted me to work for them they told me they're going to pay me 30 days post-production. So I waited. And after two months, two months post-production, I called them and they were like, just hold on, the pay, the pay is getting delayed because as you all know, last year was a tough year for all businesses. So I just chose to understand. Mm -hmm. But then when I contacted them now, four months later, which was like January, yeah, they were like, we have to wait. The person who's supposed to sign the check is not in the country there's no money just things that I, I couldn't even understand so yeah. i was like you know what i'll just go say it and if they don't give me jobs it's okay mm -hmm. somebody has to say it and this is after you've actually appeared in the magazine you've yeah. been out there the it's magazine sold has sold and yeah and there's like three more issues like after that and they've not even paid models for like five other issues and even like years yeah yeah okay um olive what have you experienced? Um, is, is it similar to Sheila's story? Um, we hear the stories of sexual exploitation, um, and of course what Sheila is talking about, promises and promises that the money will come and it never actually does come. So for you, what's your story? I've actually experienced all of them. I've experienced uh, sexual exploitations. I have lost jobs because I have not been able to offer what someone else is asking for you know, sexual favors. So I've lost jobs because of that. I have lost great opportunities because of that. I've also had delayed payments. I did a magazine cover last year, early last year. I just got paid last month. Mm -hmm. Just that, That's because I, I kept on calling and calling and calling. So I, I don't get why I need to follow up on my pay every time and have to give sexual favors to get jobs, mm -hmm. you know. These yeah. sexual favors are coming from who? Definitely from the people at the top, from the people who are offering you the jobs, from the people who have a say in, you know, you whether you're getting the job or not. Mm -hmm. So especially uh, what I faced most was I was supposed to work with a particular organization when I was crowned Miss World Kenya Second Runners Up 2015. Uh, certain organization uh, approached me and the first runners up and they wanted us to work for them as brand ambassadors in sensitization of the youth mm -hmm. and getting to the Moranga County and Kajiado and uh, all these other areas that they couldn't reach the people. And we had a couple of meetings and follow-ups and all that. And we had even started our research and, you know, all these things that go around uh, the organization, getting the, to work with an organization. And then the director of the company tried to ask for sexual favors from both of us at separate occasions. Mm -hmm. And when we refused, that's the last we had of the company. That's the last we had of the opportunity. Yeah. And we've never been able to work with the organization, even though we had so much to offer to it and 
so we, we, we didn't get the job, we didn't get the opportunity to share our talent, to share what we like to do, mm -hmm. because we couldn't exchange sexual favors. Okay, to you, Sheila, before I get to Steve um, uh, and you, Benjamin, the fact that this conversation actually happens, sexual favors, and I know that this is a conversation that happens in a lot of, um, of, of, of professions as well, especially for young ladies, um, but the fact that this conversation even comes up, don't you think that there's girls who are actually willing to go that extra mile and that is why um, it is quote unquote cheapening um, the trade and when you also talk about low pay do you know of girls who agree to take certain amounts of money that could also be cheapening the trade as well well in my case after i posted that's when i realized these things were happening i knew uh, people will try and uh, have sexual advances towards people but then when girls started like reaching out to me, telling me like this has also happened to me, that's when I realized it's actually very bad. Mm -hmm. Models were even telling me, there's, there's, there's one who told me she got paid 700 shillings for an ad on TV that ran for like two years. Why did she take it? <laughs> because I don't know, like they just want to be seen. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. They're entering the modeling industry for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, to you, Benjamin, for all of us, including me, when you start off in any industry, really, you don't expect the big money to start when you're just starting off in your career. You're told, you know, start small and eventually you'll get there. But you guys as agency have been singled out as the culprits. Sheila here actually singled out agencies, the middlemen, as the ones who are actually behind all of this, you know, the lack of payment, the delayed payment. What do you have to say about that? Um. My comment on that would be that um, it's um, okay. I'd say it's not the middlemen that are to blame, because it's um, one thing that you had mentioned is that um, when companies or brands come to work with uh, models, they come to agents, the middlemen. Um, when the middlemen are approached, they're not paid 50% um, to get the models first. It doesn't happen like that. Um, first of all, in the industry, like in the commercial industry, in huge productions, um, usually what happens in terms of payments is. Um, Production houses are paid about 60 to 70 percent um, before they start on, onto a project. And um, you might find that um, before the production house comes to the middlemen, who are now the agencies, um, I'll use the term middlemen uh, because it's the popular word of the day, um, but it, it doesn't work like that basically. And uh, what also I can, I can say about starting out small, it's, um, it's, not, it's not about starting out small in modeling because um, both Commercial modeling is all about getting you featured in um, television commercials, print billboards, and the such. But fashion, I don't know anything about fashion. Um, I don't know how that industry works. But for commercial modeling, it's basically the type of modeling that gets you featured on an advert. It's not because you're a newbie in the industry that you'll be paid 10 Gs. But Sheila is a veteran. She'll be paid 80 Gs to uh, the same project. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. But are all of you observing the same, um, you know, way of, of of doing things are you actually because th the the truth is that there are models who are and I, I saw this in the conversation around pay models ke the truth is that there are models who are paid sheila here would probably get paid much more than probably somebody who's just starting off in the industry and that's just because that's the way things are i totally refute that because um when a brand is coming when um when you are when you are a social influencer or you are an influencer you already have a mass of people who are actually behind you so um, it becomes a separate argument or a different argument um, when the company or the agency is coming to speak to you because they're coming to you as a brand because of the people that are behind you. That means that the corporates that identify that they want to work with you, part of their target market is part of the people who are behind you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, they, they are not specific on who they want to work with, so they just go on a particular look because they know that this look will send my brand properly. Sheila, have you experienced, um, I mean, uh, do you agree with what he's saying, that you're actually paid, um, like you're playing on the same level field uh, with other models in terms of payment, that, for instance, the same billboard that you'd feature in, you'd get paid the same as, say, a Juma, for instance, who's also a high fashion model? Well, I actually disagree, because I've had stories about for example, there's this girl who was telling me she was paid 20,000 shillings extra just because she had a car. And she didn't even know how it happened. Because these guys were using her, 
referring the rest of the models to the to the shoots, yeah? So it actually happens. There's a lot of discrimination. Mm -hmm. They look at you, they, they look at your standards, and then they're like, they'll just pay you nicely, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And then they look at you, they look at, they, they, they figure that you're a newbie and you don't know so much, they just pinch something off your pay. Yeah. And also, like, there's been a case also whereby I've seen the same, same production houses, okay, not production houses, these middlemen, they get, Probably, probably the client decides they're going to pay, for example, Olive, 100,000 shillings. So before they even reach to Olive, they cut the pay to 50%. Yeah. So they tell Olive, we are paying you 50K. And from that 50K, we want you to pay 20% agency fees. Mm -hmm. So you also get the 20% agency fees, and then you also have to pay 5% to the government. Okay, I'm coming to Steve. Uh, what about you, Olive? Um, we're talking about agencies being the culprits, um, the ones that are actually causing all of this drama for you guys. Are you in agreement with what Benjamin is saying, that um, models are supposed to be paid a flat fee, no, that no, they're no, supposed that to be uniformity? Um, okay, that's not what you said? Yeah, what I said is um, it, become, it becomes a different argument. Like if we were to approach you to do a digital campaign for uh, a brand, it, w it wouldn't be the same negotiation that we'll have with Sheila, for example, because you have already a mass following on your end. So that means that the brand, before they suggested somebody like you um, to, to be approached, um, they realize that um, in their target market, um, you, you, you coming in as an influencer, whoever is behind you is part of their target market. So they want to capture your target market. Okay, yeah, I'll get uh, Steve's thoughts on that. For you, um, have you experienced any um, s uh, sort of uh, discrimination, particularly from agency who are supposed to be your spokesperson when it comes to actually sealing these deals? Yes, definitely. Um, they will pay you according to how you look like or how they will, you know, they look at you and grade you and be like, uh, this one will look, looks like we can pay her 10,000, 20,000, this other one because uh, they're a bit known in the industry and they might spoil our name, uh, let's, let's pay them more. So you face a lot of discrimination. And like Sheila said, there's a lot of cutting of the pay. So you're offered 100,000, they'll give you 50,000. And then they'll tell you now pay the agency fee. Mm -hmm. So the, there's a lot of dis discrimination. And then there's a lot of, the, they use a lot of models money and s telling them, you know, stories and the contracts, they interfere with the contracts that you sign a lot. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, you know, we are a production company, we are using our equipment, so we need 50% of your pay, then we need, and then at the end of the day, you go and see, like if you look at the original contract that you had with the company itself, it's, it's quite different and the amount is more. But sometimes also the companies are to blame. Yeah because I've worked with a company, I did an advert for them, and uh, the advert was to run 2015-2016. And in 2017, they ran it till September. Mm -hmm. And I had to threaten, I had to contact the production company to threaten them for them to stop running the ad. <laughs> to threaten them. Yes, yeah. and, and sue, uh, saying that I'm going to sue them. Yeah. And this time I was actually dealing with the company itself. Mm -hmm. So it can be both agencies and companies as well. Right, right. Yeah. Steve, so talking about contractual issues here, um, and, and also just tying this into the fact that people are getting paid less money because there's market saturation of talent, hearing Sheila's story, um, and of course also hearing Olive's story here, there seems to be a lot of discrimination around pay, but more importantly, there doesn't seem to really be um, a, legal, a legally binding uh, approach to ensure that, uh, you know, for instance, Sheila here saying she's calling a magazine um, production company for months now and they keep giving her stories. What's the way forward legally? William, okay. <coughs> listening to the stories, the incontestable fact is that the exploitation of Kenyan models has reached dizzying levels. I mean, it's shocking. And I thank people like Sheila for coming out, because then this goes as a caution uh, to those people exploiting young talent. I think what I see here is some naivety and uh, ignorance of processes you don't model for fun. This is business. Uh, and like any other business, there are laws that regulate how you engage with people that uh, you offer services to. What models should know in the first instance that you are being contracted to offer services. 
It's a contract for services. Mm-hmm. It's a contract for services. It's not, a, it's not for your own amusement. These companies don't approach you for their own amusement. They, they are targeting something with you. And you must understand that. when, If it's a contract for provision of services, you must see the contract. Having it written... But seeing the contract... Steve, seeing no, the I'm contract, just, really, I'm just, I'm I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a contract, say, no. I really don't have uh, the legal interpretation of no. some jargon in that yes, contract. Yes, yes. And you lawyers I'm are pretty yes. expensive this as is, well. This is what I'm telling all models to take note of. Mm-hmm. If, you, if, you, if, if, you, if you assume some work, you get some work and you start performing this, without a contract, you have exposed yourself to manipulation. Mm-hmm. And they will exhaust you with lengthy talk and then discussion and eventually let your money go and then you'll cry. The thing is this. Anybody who wants your services, you must agree. Whether it's a standard form contract or whether you're able to negotiate, what is it? Do you have an established capacity? You know, because if you have an established capati- uh, capacity or a strong reputation, then you can negotiate. Now, as you negotiate, before you commence any work, make sure that you can see that contract and you read including the fine print. If you are unable to understand it, you don't need to sign a contract. There are people are allowed to say, can I carry this copy? Let me consult a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can always get a lawyer to help you interpret <laughs> what that, what, what that, what that, what, what that, what that contract says. She's to what gonna relax, saying, but yeah. once you get a proper interpretation, if somebody decides to shortchange you, you can seek legal assistance in terms of enforcement of that contract. Right. If you come to me as an advocate and tell me I have an agreement with this company, I did modeling for them, they haven't paid me. The first question I'll ask you, so where's the agreement? You know, it was just the word of mouth, that's how the industry works. Then you have to begin to change it. I think models, Kenyan models must reach a level where you, you must begin to reject some work. Yeah. If somebody does not appreciate you for the worth or the value that you bring, mm. make sure that step number one, There is an agreement. If you don't understand it, seek legal advice. Once you understand, it's very easy to enforce that contract if somebody tinkers with it. And like what uh, she's mentioned, if the contract for service is for a durational period of, let's say, 12 months or 24 months, it ends there. Any other subsequent use of that image or maybe an extension of that contract without your authorization Mm -hmm. It's a violation of your rights and you are entitled to legal redress. So I think a lot of awareness is needed among the young models. Mm-hmm. I heard in that clip they were saying that they, they model for fun. If you model for fun and for future for expectation of future work, you'll be harassed, you'll be you'll be humiliated, mm-hmm. you will be frustrated. Don't model for fun. Model because you know this is an income generating activity. Yeah. And if it's a, if it's your business, that's what you want to survive on. You must do it. You must follow the law every step of the way. And the law is laid. Mm. It's very easy then to help you if you have the paper trail. Okay. Yeah, if paper you trail. have the paper trail. Yes. Uh, Sheila, I saw you reacting to what Steve um, was saying. What in particular caught your attention? The fact that models should uh, go seek uh, help from lawyers. First of all, the kind of money we are paid, no lawyer, not unless they are trying to work pro bono, yeah. no lawyer will even want to listen to you. I come to you as a lawyer and I'm like, so I'm getting, I'm getting paid 10K and I need help in case they don't pay me. Will you really listen to me? Steve, will you? Just <laughs> answer. <laughs> Honestly, really, <laughs> answer. Will you listen to a case whereby you are supposed to follow up 10,000 shillings? But if you bring a matter <laughs> <with confidence. laughs> See, I mean, and that is precisely, and that is a very yeah, good, yeah. good point to no, note. Mm. You guys are expensive, and, and, and these young men and women are finding themselves in a dilemma because they need these contracts interpreted. They need um, uh, some legal advice on the way forward, but the legal fee is too I high. They don't even get paid for, <laughs> for the jobs. How are they going to afford let me, let me not, first of all, let me not speak as an advocate. Let me, let me speak even as a Christian believer. When I was admitted as an advocate, um, the verse that was read to us, Micah 6, 8, it says, See to it that justice is done, but let mercy be your first concern. You certainly will find an advocate who will listen to you and may want to take your matter pro bono. And in any case, the law society of Kenya, there are vast these kind of issues. If there's an emerging trend where young models who really want exposure, who really want to, to, to establish their career, are now being exploited, Yes, they can come in and they can instruct a pro, uh, an, a, 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 a maybe let's say an advocate to act pro bono. Mm-hmm. So I think the first step that models should know 
I think you should know where to get legal assistance. Yeah. In any case, I'd, I just want to sensitize them. It is not only lawyers that can give basic legal advice. We have paralegals. Mm -hmm. Utilize them. Paralegals can then now tell you, perusing your papers or listening to your story, this is the kind of story that I can refer to a lawyer and a lawyer will give you right. legal assistance. Right now, we have the Legal Aid Act. Although the Legal Aid Act 2016 seeks to serve the indigent, the poor people, are not decided, it didn't really, it was not really uh, enacted with this kind of young models who are trying to form a career in mind, but you can innovate within that law. So I'm saying, if you keep looking, if you have a, a, a problem and you feel like you need legal assistance, mm -hmm. you look around, you'll find someone who's able to listen to you and to give you, right now, this is part of civic education. Nobody's paying for this service. This are legal advice you're giving. So this is assistance already. Mm -hmm. There are a team of paralegals that can also yeah. offer assistance. But what is important going forward, the service that we now lawyers can give now, mm -hmm. let models not commence work without written agreement yeah. because then it makes it easier mm -hmm. to support them should they have their problem. That is the first step, Sheila, and I totally feel you. I hear you on your concerns. Um, on how expensive these guys can be. But there's something, as we wind up, there's something that Steve uh, pointed out, and that's about rejecting rejecting some offers, rejecting some, some money. And the thing is, I personally, there's money I will not work for. I get called mm -hmm. for a lot of gigs, but there's money that I will not work for. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, and I brought this up earlier, it cheapens the industry when people take a certain amount that... Um, you perhaps were offered and refused because then what sets you apart as a professional mm. and as a high fashion uh, model. Uh, so for you, what is the way forward in terms of you know rejuvenating and reviving this industry? Because a lot of you, I believe, have a very short lifeline in terms of how long you can be in this career. Yeah. Um, and I, I think a lot of you aspire to go international as well. So for you, when you started this hashtag, um, what ideally do you think should be done so that we put an end to the atrocities that you guys are facing? Well, currently, I have put up a pin on my social media whereby models can register, put in their names, uh, their email addresses, and write their stories. Because a lot of models have been exploited sexually, actually, yeah? And it's so sad. And we've gotten lawyers who are willing to, who've had the story and they've reached out to me and they're willing to work pro bono and mm -hmm. help people okay, who've not been paid and, and stuff like that. And also, out there, people know Kenya as a land of talent, but the land of cheap talent, which is so wrong. We just need to boycott, not just models only, but big brands, yeah? The people who are giving these people jobs. We just need to stop giving them the jobs so that they rectify the situation. The people who accept to be featured in these magazine covers, the high profile people, you're getting featured in a magazine cover whereby there's probably six girls inside there who are not getting paid. Models are sleeping hungry. They don't have money. Like, we can't continue supporting the trend, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the best thing right now to move forward is for the models who are affected to come seek help and for all of us to join, uh, to join hands and decide we are not going to work for these people until they change the trend. And I'm glad yeah. that you you actually um, do conquer with what he's saying, that the legal yeah. input is extremely important. Yeah. So with this hashtag, really, it would be unfortunate to start it and then just see it fizzle out and uh, see no change whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so have you made any strides at all? Um, are you seeing um, any hope in terms of uh, things changing? I'm seeing hope, especially because models have gotten a voice now. Models are not scared to talk. They're telling stories that happened five years ago, stories that are happening. They're not afraid to call out the people who are actually mm -hmm. uh, oppressing them, which is a very good thing. But currently, as I said, is dealing with the situation at hand. There's a lot of models who've not been paid. Yeah. So it's probably seeking, seeking legal help, as I said. There's a pin on my social media. Mm -hmm. You can all go there. Just post your stories. If you've been assaulted, post this a lot of lawyers who are willing to work pro bono will give you help. And then after that, we can see what we'll do when these people realize these people are actually serious. Because I mean, you can't sell an other products if you don't have models. Models are the face of these products. Yeah. Without, without, I mean, without me, this outfit would look funny. You wouldn't understand what it is. So they're used out there to like, show a picture of what exactly it is, yeah? Mm -hmm. And lure like people to get these things. So if we stop and if people stop giving these people jobs, 
they will probably come forward and own up to their mistakes and probably decide to change. Yeah. Steve, for, 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 for just very briefly from you, for those who have worked and have not been paid, if there's no binding contract, is there really any point even um, contacting Sheila if you went ahead and did a gig somewhere and didn't even bother to look into a contract or to sign a contract, it was just word of mouth like you said, um, is there any need for recourse really? The short answer is no, uh, because then uh, without proof of contractual obligation. But the proof is there in the no, billboard I mean, yeah. no, no, or in the magazine. What I'm saying is yeah. mm -hmm. we can't really tell to be your word against their word. Mm -hmm. We can't really yes. tell. But, but what I want to, to mention is this. Some of the discussions happening here, board on these are criminal offenses. I think models should not lose the integrity of your voice. You know, be strong. If you b you'd rather lose that gig, but you report the offense mm. for action. Sexual molestation, harassment is an offense in this country. You shouldn't tolerate it for whatever reason, economic gain or otherwise. So that's number one. Number two, document. And I think whether you want to document it through what she is saying or maybe whether you want to find out, find out of documenting your stories for the people who are listening and you have contracts that have not been enforced. Well, collect. They'll bring to us, we will review and see what is actionable and what is not. Number three, I think this industry, or is it an industrial sector? The, the sector has some established names. I think those have a moral obligation to find out how the younger ones are faring. Mm. I think it's not fair that you walk away with huge, uh, I mean, you have what is calling the influencers, you know, because then because you can be paid higher, you don't care about what younger models are getting. I think pull to let, let there be some form of networking among the models that you can tell your own stories and then the senior, the, the more established one can also support you. You get this both the, the the violation of the economic okay, rights. Is, is there anything like a senior model? Like I asked no, like, that like before, the mm. lifeline. The younger you are, I assume, the more marketable you are. Uh, no, no, really? Yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's okay, hear from Steve uh, first. Uh -huh. So those established models, let them look out for each other. Mm -hmm. That is unqualified obligation, a moral obligation. The issue of uh, economic right and moral right, moral right meaning that you're not using someone's, uh, someone's image without due acknowledgement, you know, even if it's within the contractual period, you are not diverting, di di you know, you're not using it outside the contract. It's both a violation of your economic right because you must earn for every work. Mm -hmm. It's also a violation of your moral right that you should, whatever you do must be, uh, must be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. I think to the, the middlemen, the middlemen of the agencies, I think you must also be conscious of the spirit of the constitution Every aspect of governance, be it in the private or public sector, we seek to inspire national renewal. It can't be that in terms of governance, you know, the country's moving forward, but in the private spaces, we are stuck pre-2010 dispensation, mm. where it's only the, the, your own interest, the capital motive, the commercial interest, and not you must adopt an approach that harmonizes your business interest with the intended purpose, the, 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 that self-renewal. Make sure that, make Kenyans feel proud that they are valued just like their counterparts in the East Africa, if not more. Mm -hmm. Let it not be said under a new constitutional dispensation that there is discrimination, there is violation, there is, in, there is intimidation, there is exploitation. All these things are not consistent with our national values yeah. as a country. That is my plea to them. Okay, and we hope that you're going to be mm. talking to Sheila and Olive and <laughs> working yeah. pro bono for them. You're a good chap, Steve. <laughs> so, Olive, for you, um, this is Sheila's in, um, initiative, and and you know you've you've agreed together with your colleagues in this industry to support her as well by um, speaking out against um, the vices. Uh, recently, a production company I don't know if they were representing this popular boy band, or if the boy band is the one that actually went out asking for models to come and appear in their videos, and that they will get food and drinks and the necessary exposure. For you, the way forward. And I want to talk once again about the fact that even if you refuse that money today, somebody else, fresh-eyed, wide-eyed in this industry will take it, and therefore the job will still get done. Mm. What's the way forward? Uh, first, I, I believe that when you want change, you start the change yourself. Mm. So first of all, I have personally declined work. That mm. you know, I, have, I feel like it's not appreciating me enough or appreciating my talent. Number two, I have come up with an agency <laughs> called Seven Pillars for to try and be different and just represent models the way they should be represented. Mm -hmm. And 
through the agency have declined jobs who want to offer models mediocre money because you know they don't view it as talent or something that is important and I feel like there should be sensitization to the company to the public because they don't people don't think modeling can be a career or it's something that you do uh, that is something that can earn you money because uh, I am a lawyer I have personally signed contracts you were saying we, we need to look at contracts I have signed contracts I go through all my contracts I have signed contracts but companies will still go ahead and violate the contracts why because they feel modeling is not a big deal you will do nothing as a model and truthfully I've just started uh, uh, practicing and it's hard for you to find a lawyer who will actually want to offer services pro bono for modeling yeah until Sheila sensitized everyone mm -hmm. and came up with the hashtag and we all joined hands that's when people realized it's actually a problem before people didn't see it as a problem yeah so it's very hard to get a lawyer who will represent you until now when people know it's actually a problem mm -hmm. also wait there's this number of people it's like he was shocked there's this, this number of people people actually go through this I'll offer my services but before people are sensitized and know that modeling is actually a career people actually do modeling then people don't take it seriously so people need to start taking modeling seriously and number two I feel like companies should be in contact with the model anytime even if they use middlemen they should always ensure that the model gets the contracts that they intended them to get and ensure that they use agencies that are good agencies that will not exploit models just like Sheila Sheila has uh, done a pin uh, the Google uh, drive uh, the Google uh, document where you can now put the complaints companies should go through that and see the companies that have been shamed mm -hmm. and not work with those companies so you've actually mm. named and shamed yes other yeah. perpetrators from the pin the ladies who post their stories the stories will go public the we'll just go through the stories and we'll put them there we'll blacklist those people how sure how sure are you that everybody is being honest how sure are you that people are not just uh, perhaps um, upset that they didn't get jobs and therefore are naming and shaming innocent uh, clients well surprisingly mm -hmm. the stories I'm getting there are people who are very notorious I'm getting repeat cases mm -hmm. like okay. 10 cases for one magazine 12 for another one like it, there's culprits mm -hmm. I can't say there are people that there, there are no guys who are like honest in the industry there are but it's so hard to find them but there are those people who we know if we deal with those ones even the ones who are thinking about it will stop I wish we could name them here, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want yeah. a legal suit <laughs> coming <laughs> our way. Yeah. Um, for you, Benjamin, as agency, you know, just redeeming really um, your bad image, and I'm not saying you um, as your agency, but the thing is a lot of agencies have taken advantage, and a lot of them are really uh, fraudsters who have no idea what this industry is all about. So the, wo the way forward from industry, um, from agency, um, as you support or as we hope that you're going to join hands with models such as Sheila to bring an end to the rot in the industry. Okay, um, first things first, I'd say that um, we, we, we join hands with Sheila as agency because um, there are good agencies outside that um, are actually advocating for models to be paid for free. And actually, one, um, there's the agency that I work with um, in Vogue Models, we offer free, free advice of um, if you get a job with a company, you can always contact us. We go together with you through the contract that you've been given and we'll advise you appropriately depending on the rates that are actually in the market because models are not aware of these rates. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the information, you can come for us and we do it for free. Um, the other thing is also for models to just stop being ignorant because um, agents are actually supposed to act as your, lawyer, as your lawyers at the end of the day because um, they're the ones who actually are getting you the job. So if you name and shame them, if you do your homework right and see that I can work with this company because they are truthful, because an agent is somebody, th somebody that you can trust. When you're going to a lawyer, he's, actu he's, he's acting on your behalf as well. When you're going, um, even, even, even um, footballers have agents, even um, high-end models have agents, professionals usually have agents that actually speak for them because yeah. as a model, you're not supposed to, you, you, the agencies and agents are supposed to take off or relieve the stress of you knowing how much I'm supposed to be paid for this job because you actually trust them. Mm -hmm. I so then, then I guess, yeah, yes, I suppose then the onus is on you um, to have integrity um, and also for the models to book 
um, with m agencies that have a good reputation as well. Um, I wish we could continue with this conversation. There's just too uh, much um, to talk about around this issue, and we certainly hope that this conversation will continue on Twitter. Um, continue using the hashtag PayModelsKE and support Sheila here um, in her initiative uh, to uh, bring an end to the atrocities that models, commercial models in this country have been facing, even as they aspire to go international, even as they aspire to do more uh, with their titles, like these two beauty queens here. Um, we thank you very much for your time. I was joined by Olive Waidera. Uh, Miss World uh, Kenya Moranga County, uh, also joined uh, from agency by Benjamin Rachar, who is um, of In Vogue Models. Um, we're also joined by Sheila Kanini, who started the hashtag Pay Models Kenya. Um, and she's Miss World Kenya um, 2016, that's Machakos County. And also with us tonight, uh, Steve Ogola, who is not a stranger to your screens. Um, he is a lawyer and um, very um, frequent on Citizen Extra and our other uh, political shows as well. We thank you for your time. Uh, we're back with All The Day Sports. Continue using the hashtag PayModelsKE as you continue to support Sheila Kanini um, in the drive to end, as I said earlier, the atrocities that have been going on in the modeling industry in Kenya. We're back with more. Stay with us.